It's November 9th, 2010, and you just beat the Black Ops 1 campaign. So you decide to go to zombies. The menu changes. All you see is crawlers on the screen and a zombie pounding on the window. This is the atmospheric horror that Black Ops 1 was going for, and it nailed it. So today, I'm going to be talking about why COD Zombies pre-Black Ops 4 is some of the best zombies. So let's get into it. What you just saw was the opening cinematic for World at War Zombies. That's what it would have appeared when you beat the campaign. Nine-year-old me at my grandpa's house playing the Xbox 360. He had World at War. And so I booted it up. You know, I played through the whole campaign. I was staying at my grandparents' house for a few days uh, while my parents were on a vacation. And so I grinded uh, World at War. I, admit, I swear it has no psychological effect on me seeing the horrors of that campaign. But after I beat that campaign, I was pleasantly surprised. It just opened up this new world and can of worms for me. The Nazis and the Japanese that I've been fighting the whole campaign have now reincarnated from the dead. Granted, at this time, World at War uh, the only map that was out, or at least I had access to, was Nocturne Toten. And Nocturne Toten originally was just a kind of an extra on accident. It was a map that was made by the developers in order to just kind of fool around and have fun. Um, and it was originally supposed to be like a tower defense style game mode, not this uh, round wave kind of PvE mode that it is today, uh, full of Easter eggs. Easter eggs back then were very lackluster, like, I, I think the only main one I remember is playing Durais and, um, Durice, however you pronounce it, and shooting, um, the panel that's on the side of the column Coliseum with a back bunch weapon, um, and that activates the hide and seek quest line, which they later kind of fit into the story with Black Ops 3 and the Giant, um, but originally, you were just four marines that got crashed in your plane, and you found yourself in this, you know, weird bunker. And as the years have gone by, we've gotten more maps like Shino Numa. Uh, we've gotten, you know, Doris, which was the last map uh, for World at War. You had Asylum, um, and that has a really cool toilet Easter egg. But we'll get that into that with the uh, Easter egg category. But in case you're new here, um, and sorry to keep getting nostalgic over here, but COD Zombies is a round-based PvE game mode, four-player co-op maximum, but you can also play solo. Originally, it was a two-hit-down game, and Zombies' health, as well as weapon damage, uh, scale. So the Zombies' health goes up, but your weapon damage stays the same. You could get a gun that's amazing round one, and then round 15, it just starts to blow. Um, old zombies, especially World of War zombies, uh, with the way it was being clunky, uh, they very much were still rough around the edges. The game mode was not fully refined. Uh, two hits down, you know, that's very risky, high risk, high reward. Um, but you would also just end up getting killed by a glitch. You would pop a zombie's head off, and he would do his little animation of walking a few feet and then die. But as that was happening, he maybe hit you once or twice. Uh, or Ghost Limbs was a big deal. World at War used a specific engine um, that allowed a lot more gore at the time. So being able to blow off limbs um, was a big appeal. You know, you gotta think this is 2000, uh, about 2008, and that, that was the shit, you know, being cool. So what ended up happening uh, was sometimes you would shoot an arm off and then that guy would somehow hit you with no arm and you would go down. Uh, a lot of these they refined later, but gameplay loop has always been get your perks, uh, perks such as Juggernaut, which allows you to take up to eight hits, 
Um, I believe it's a little less than the older ones. I believe it's six, but I think Black Ops 3 or 4 bumped it up to eight. Um, Speed Cola, which just allows you to reload faster. It also makes, if you're running any kind of wonder weapon or um, light machine gun, makes it a thousand times better because uh, you're not going to get hit mid-reload because those reload times on those guns are crazy. They're like three, four seconds. Um, that's just enough time to get swarmed. But due to the low RAM in the uh, original Xbox 360s, uh, zombies, early zombies is just a weird state for zombies. They're still trying to figure out how the game should play. They're experimenting with what's too overpowered, what's not overpowered enough. Um, and they're really just experimenting in this stage. But then we get to the more refined uh, second generation zombies, which would be Black Ops 1. Black Ops 1 zombies introduces a whole new openness about it uh, that I feel like was missing in World at War Zombies. Black Ops 1 has Moon, Shangri-La, it also has Five, as well as Dead Ops Arcade, which is the first introduction of a top-down zombies game mode in Call of Duty. Um, and with that being said, each map did have its own gimmick. I felt like the only one to really embrace gimmicks was uh, Doris. And that's just simply because you have to link the teleporters and then once you link the teleporters it'll actually spawn power-ups so there's new strategies that get invented uh, such as waiting till you're low on ammo to activate the last uh, teleporter just in case it might spawn a max ammo 90% uh, of the time it's carpenter or an insta kill that's just my experience uh, and then you get to black ops 1 uh, you have Ascension as well, Call of the Dead with George A. Romero, um, amazing director, rest in peace. Um, and you just get this feeling of, oh, this isn't just, you know, middle of Europe or uh, middle of the Pacific theater. This is different. We have zombies in the penthouse, the penthouse, Pentagon, excuse me. <laughs> you have zombies in the Pentagon. And you've got JFK blasting motherfuckers with the death machine. You're telling me this is not the next best thing in zombies? I learned more about the people that were portrayed in 5. I'm talking Kennedy, I'm talking Nixon, I'm talking Castro, and I'm talking Johnson. And, or sorry, McNamara. But... As a kid, I thought he was Lyndon B. Johnson for some reason, even though they look nothing alike, but just because my one friend Josh told me and I was like 12, so I believed his ass. Um, other than that, like, that game, all of Black Ops 1 taught me way more about history than, like, my elementary and middle school fucking history teachers ever did. And uh, it's, it's sad to say the American education system's so dog shit, but we love it because I can sleep through a class, and as long as I show up, I get a C. But back to zombies, anyways. Um, also, like and subscribe. Uh, comment Brains uh, or Samantha in the comments. Uh, we gotta get that algorithm back up. I'm like right on the cusp of 4K, and I don't wanna ruin it, and this video really means a lot to me because I've always loved zombies. So just uh, all the support, guys, thank you. Now, another thing to touch on in gameplay, uh, it very much gets altered uh, in Black Ops 2. You see them start to roll out Mob of the Dead, where they're, if you want to go to the Pack-a-Punch, you have to build a plane. Um, Black Ops 2 also introduces parts and craftables, whereas Black Ops 1, it has parts, but they're more towards like Easter eggs. Um, not as much in terms of gameplay. Black Ops 2 on transit, for example, in order to get out of the starting room without paying for the door, you have to use the mannequin, the fan, and I think like a battery, I can't remember, uh, but you basically assemble those into a workbench and that lets you open the doors. Now the other gimmick is to turn on the power on transit. And this is not including the bus. The bus is another big gimmick of that map. Um, but I never really hated it. And I never really hated that map as a kid. Uh, a lot of people really, really were into it. Um, when it first came out, 
And then I think maybe two weeks later, they were kind of like, oh, that map's dog shit. We need different maps. Um, but Black Ops 2 changes up that gameplay. Uh, it adds a few new perks, like Stamina Up, uh, which I can't remember if it was in Black Ops 1. Um, and that just allows you to move your, you know, change your running speed. Black Ops 1 also introduced Deadshot Daiquiri. Black Ops 2, on the other hand, it offers Electric Cherry every time you reload. Uh, or I should say randomly when you reload, it'll shoot out a little wave of lightning in front of you. It prevents you from getting swarmed. It also introduces Who's Who, uh, which to this day I still kind of don't know what that perk does. Um, and I don't feel like looking it up. It also introduced Tombstone, which allows you to basically pick up all of your perks minus Tombstone when you go down, but it does have a limited use. Um, you still keep your same perks. Juggernaut. Speed Cola, uh, self revive or quick revive, which self revives you, as well as um, double tap. Those all still stay in the base Black Ops 2 game. It's not until um, you start getting to the DLC maps do you start getting interesting perks. And with that being said, Black Ops 2's DLC really does shake it up. Like I said, Mob of the Dead. You've got Buried, where it introduces an NPC that you actually have to give either candy or booze to. Um, he's like an alcoholic father, he has to pick one uh, before he goes and beats his kids. His kids are the zombies, YouTube please don't demonetize me. Um, and Leroy's just this big guy. I know he's got a proper name, but everyone used to call him Leroy back then. And he would smash through barricades to make shortcuts in the map. Uh, you could have him smash the fountain, and that would activate part of an easter egg as well as a teleporter. Uh, so you can get to the Pack-a-Punch through the Witch's Maze. Um, it just was so good. Uh, you have Nuketown Zombies. It also introduced a new game mode that really switched up zombies, uh, which was turned. That allows people to basically either do a 2v2 or a 1v1 style uh, PvP match where one or two players play as the zombie and two play as survivors um, And your whole goal is to basically it's like gun game But with zombies and then if you're a zombie and you kill the guy you get whatever gun you had So if the guy's on the last weapon like weapon 9 out of 10 and you get him now you have weapon 9 out of 10 So you just gotta shoot the zombie once so I see why I didn't really catch on too much um, But grief did catch on it was kind of like PvE, but also PvP, like you couldn't kill each other, but you couldn't revive each other. And it was all who could live the longest and get the most score won. Really fun game mode back in the day to play with the boys. Nowadays, it's deader than a rock. Uh, and then we get to Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 introduces the advanced movement mechanics such as wall writing, um, Shadows of Evil Pack Punch, talking about you. It also introduces more of the crafting with the summoning key, finding different parts to make the zombie shield, finding different parts to make the Margo gun, finding different parts just for the Easter egg. And then Shadows had two main gimmicks aside from turning in the, the beast, and that was to unlock new areas, um, like by either grappling, and then you'd have to find a power box, and you have to hit it with your electricity. And then once you did that, you can open up a, a locked door or the power or pack a punch. Um, and then you start to get to the Marglas. They're very similar to the Panzers in Black Ops 2. Uh, the Panzer Shreks, those things were evil when they first came out. Black Ops 3, they're not a threat at all anymore. Black Ops 3 also introduces um, Zetsu Bonoshima. It also introduces um, the castle map. Rising Jock, and that introduces both two new Easter eggs as well as two new unique wonder weapons. But we'll go over all the weapons in just a bit. Um, we're not going to be talking about Black Ops 4 in this video today because I only ever played the first like two maps of it, uh, which was Blood of the Dead and like one other, and it just was not my not my zombies. Um, Titanic map was cool. But that was about it. So for our next category. According to the COD Zombie Wiki, there are 27 weapons in World of War. 
So I'm going to scroll through it for you. Now with that in mind, Black Ops 1 reintroduced the same old zombies um, from World at War, including some of the weapons, some did not make the cut and got replaced with Black Ops 1 zombies weapons. Um, some notable ones on that list are going to be the Flamethrower, that doesn't really see a return until Black Ops 3 zombies. Um, we also don't really see the return of like the Panzer Shrek. Or any of those fun odd weapons um, as well as scope car 98 can only be gotten from the sniper cabinet or the box um, and that thing was like one of those I, I considered an OG wonder weapon if I'm being 100% honest um, that thing was nutty back in the day um, and then black ops 2 we start seeing some more unique weapons some more modernized weapons with the zombies We'd introduced to the Ray Gun Mark II, as well as the Thunder Gun, which we've already had previously, that makes a return. You also get the Jet Gun, the Paralyzer, and another really unique weapon I feel like that doesn't get a lot of appreciation is Gab Knuckles. Gab Knuckles are electric brass knuckles, um, and they're one of the gimmicky ways you can actually kill um, the EMP Ion Transit. Crucify me in the comments because I'm not a zombies lore aficionado. I just like to play and do the Easter eggs. I don't care about the lore uh, because Black Ops 3 and 4 kind of fucked it up. Well, that's a video for a different day. Now to move on to maps. So, maps, in my opinion, is where zombies really shines because maps allow for so much more creativity with black ops 3 with new movement mechanics new gameplay mechanics having had the zombies community for quite a few years now giving inputs and direct feedback on what they liked and disliked so black ops 3 was going in a really good direction uh whereas its predecessors black ops 1 black ops 2 and world of war zombies uh kind of reshilled the same mac like map pack Black Ops 2 had its own storyline going on. Um, you kind of say goodbye to Richtofen, Dempsey, Nikolai, and Takio um, in order to actually play as a new crew. You have Mama Missy, hell yeah, Moralton, Russman, and Stuhlinger. And they're kind of their own. It's the first time in the Zombies universe that we see another group of survivors that aren't affected by 115 and they're journeying all across the globe trying to figure out what's going on and what's the safest because Stuhlinger starts getting um, visions and auditory hallucinations um, with zombies and that's when we start to learn the reason in Black Ops 2 the zombies have different eye colors is because they're controlled by Richtofen but in previous games, they were yellow. They were controlled by Samantha. Samantha is Maxis's daughter. And I'll kind of get into a bit of a lore tangent in another part. But the Black Ops 1 map selection uh, was pretty okay. Dead Ops Arcade, Moon, Shangri-La, 5. Um, the World at War map pack showed back up as DLC. Um, and they had higher quality and HD textures this time. Uh, so I kind of consider that in the black ops 3 variants as um, the definitive editions of those maps as well as um, you also have ascension uh, which is a brand new style of map um, with a new gimmick as well of monkeys that steal the perks um, not the perk 30s just your perk machines and you have to kill them before they take it you also get a max ammo they replace the dog rounds And then we get to Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 had some of the best maps in my opinion, and probably my most played Call of Duty title is Black Ops 2. Um, I'm talking Nuketown 2025, Transit, um, all of the maps that are in Transit, like Farm, Town, 
uh, as well as the different game modes to each unique map. We got Buried, we got Mob of the Dead, we got Origins. I, I still can't believe Origins was able to run on 360 hardware. Like, that feels like a miracle. The Easter egg for it, all the cool shit, being able to get a golden shovel, that was dope. Being able to wear, um, like, night helmets and shit like that to not get crushed by the big-ass robots. And that's the other thing. What other game can you play where there's three z big-ass robots stomping through just a World War I battle zone and just picking up players in their feet? It, it doesn't... It doesn't make sense in the long run, to be completely honest. But it is cool as shit. And that's where I kind of get into my, my next big, ish, uh, I guess, issues with maps. Is there is some lackluster ones. You've got Call of the Dead from Black Ops 1. A lot of people consider Transit as kind of a lackluster gimmicky map. Black Ops 3, I don't like Zetsubo no Shima. I know. I'm also not a huge fan of Gorog Krovi. I know, no. Put your frustrations in the comments. I challenge all of you, if you didn't do my previous comment challenge because you were, you're sleeping, because you think my videos are ASMR and not just, like, content. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically scream really loud in the mic in about, I don't know, five seconds, so skip past if you don't want to hear it. But this is for all the people who are sleeping right now. And everyone, don't mention this timestamp in the comments. Throw a different timestamp, a random timestamp. Be like, I really like this part. Um, because in like the next five seconds, I'm going to scream at the top of my lungs for help. And it's going to scare the shit out of at least somebody out there who has their YouTube TV on watching my shit. And they're fucking passed out. Ready? Three, two, help! Please! For the love of God! So anyways, um, I'm just not a big fan of those two maps. Black Ops 4, like I said, we're not including that in this video. That was nothing but dog shit maps minus Blood of the Dead because it was just nostalgia bait. Other than that, they were all dog shit. But Black Ops 3 just takes the cake. You get Revelations, you get the Zombies map pack, which is all the old maps remastered, and that beautiful, beautiful 2016 1080p high texture resolutions as well as they did all the remastering for the music they brought the original people in it was great and i also really like shadows of evil because snakeskin boots is a banger so i didn't really have like a plan going into this video um i i've just recently been picking back up zombies so i thought I should make a video because I'm sure I'm not the only one who loves and appreciates Treyarch for what they did back in the day. Um, and I feel like it's something that we took for granted. And generally, just speaking, I love zombies. I love the zombies community. Minus the cheaters. Um, for speed runs which and record runs, which personally I don't really care because I don't go for, but still not cool. Zombies has always had like this special place in my heart Getting home from school hopping on the Xbox with the boys Booting up shadows of evil or whatever cod we wanted to play and just doing an Easter egg marathon I'm talking back-to-back -back Easter eggs. We would do shadows of evil and then we'd go to origin and then we'd hop back on black ops 3 and we'd go to Like Zetsubo and then we do Dorizen drug like it was just fun and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have the same experience I did and had a lot of fun. Um, and that's just something I want to share because I got a friend that has never played and doesn't get the hype. And I'm hoping this video reaches some people's home pages and they go, oh, maybe I should get a COD Zombies. And uh, I can't advocate for piracy because uh, that's, that's uh, illegal, not immoral. But um, if you find, you know, a copy for cheaper elsewhere, like $3.99, uh, take that opportunity because Treyarch is smoking fat copium if they think a 12-year-old game is worth $60.
they are smoking copium. Um, and also Black Ops 3, uh, if you get it on a summer sale, pretty good. Uh, but just for the zombies, don't play any of these games multiplayer online unless you're going through a client. Uh, because they still have terrible PC ports with terrible security. And some, just some kind of final thoughts and closing statements on it. If you guys have been liking my stuff recently, or hating it, whatever it may be, leave it in the comments. I want to make stuff you guys enjoy. And I want to make more of it. And on a timely manner. Um, I should be having a new video out shortly after this. Um, I'm thinking about doing a Gmod Iceberg, if those haven't been played out yet. But that's, uh, that's about it. See ya.